It's like seeing an old friend out in the distance or somebody. You don't know who it is. But as you get them closer and closer, you can uh, recognize them until they're in front of you and say, oh, this, uh, this is who you are. It's basically the same idea in my mind, okay? It, it, it approaches closer and closer toward me until I finally reveal what it is, or it reveals itself. I, I can say it reveals itself. I'm just a, a catalyst. I'm just the person that just, whose hands are being guided by the, by the guy, by the Powagan. Well, I had sort of like a, something we call it like an epiphany, maybe. I'm not sure if that's the right word. When I was a small boy, about, uh, I don't know, eight, maybe seven, it would take a year. I was in the community here in St. Mary's and uh, out playing around with a bunch of friends, running from house to house, back doors, and I stumbled across, ran across, came across this old man carving. And uh, I just stopped and watched him in amazement, I guess. I was, just the energy and the spirit is coming from that open door garage. And from that day, I guess, I just, I, I, I told myself, I, uh, I wanted to be a part of that, or that to be a part of me. Last two and a half years, I've been doing nothing but carving and learning. Uh, uh, unlike uh, the great Ned Bear has been doing this for, for decades. I joined the Canadian Army, and I was in the Armed Forces, uh, Canadian Armed Forces, for about two years. Served overseas peacekeeping in Cyprus for about a few months. And when I was in the Army, I was, we sometimes go out and exercise in the, in the wooded areas, and I would try to carve something with a, with a dull pocket knife, this will. I, did, I still had that will inside of me. And, I just tried to do it myself, and I said, I made, I made uh, an assumption the best way to do it was the easiest way is to use a bar of soap. So I tried a bar of soap to do that, unsuccessfully. <laughs> yeah, and I went back to the university, and then somebody told me there was an art college in town, so I checked it out. I basically worked there in a, in a studio by myself, learning the techniques. But they had the tools. I seen the tools there and said, oh. At a later age, I decided to go back to uh, MBCCD, uh, was it College of Craft and Design, uh, to take some, I wanted to learn it all. And then everything changed. Once I put my hands on a chisel and started working with wood, uh, I haven't felt peace like that in a long time. I mean, when I first started carving, I said, I'm not, I didn't decide I own a carving mask. It's something that just came eventually in time. Because I learned through Charlie Gaffney, who learned through Ned Bear, so like I said, you could call me a third generation, and hopefully my kids might be a fourth generation, so. Because I live in the East, and my bloodline goes to the West, I didn't have much contact with my own people, my father's people. So I encouraged myself to learn the language. Powagan is a Cree word, which means spirit guide or spirit helper. And uh, the concept overlaps with the, the, the concept of a mask itself from Western uh, theory. What a mask does, it, it sort of hides the face and helps, maybe heals somebody inside to reveal themselves because they're behind a mask. They're not so in inhibited. It's a healing thing, so that's why it, it sort of fit all together for me. A spirit guide, a spirit helper. And a spirit helper does the same thing. It uh, helps you through difficult times when you have a problem. A spirit helper is supposedly there to help you get through those times. It's a, it comes from within, I guess, and without, uh, but mostly within. Uh, once my grandmother passed, uh, she was uh, my language, my knowledge, my connection to uh, my people. Once uh, she passed away, I realized that everything was in my hands. I have two young boys. 
I needed to learn uh, my people's language because uh, once we learn the language, we can see through their eyes. We can understand them a little bit better, a lot better. Um, but uh, after one, after a bit of language, it was uh, a crafts. I know we come from a long line of makers. It's it's these. It's our hands that we use. It has been uh, the reconnection I've been looking for for a long time. I've always had a connection. Uh, Nagokoko or Tobin, uh, have, that's where my family's from. And we, and when I was younger, we were there every weekend. So I was part of the reserve, that type. But living off reserve, uh, it was a different growing up. In my school, I was the only uh, ski genug. I was the only native there. So uh, it was a little bit different. Uh, and uh, being off reserve for a while, it's not so much the reserve, uh, hard going back to reserve, but you, it's something inside you. You don't feel as comfortable as you probably should. But my art now, now, uh, and before I thought it was because I, I could give nothing back to the reserve that I really need to give back. I got no problem going in any reserve at all now because I have something to add to the, that uh, communal uh, pot of knowledge, uh, uh, we like to call it. Uh. There weren't any actually Kiowas, mass Kiowas in this region for many, many years. And to, to make it to make a dent or make a initiate this kind of event, I guess it's a kind of a legacy, I guess, for when I'm not here anymore. So I give credit to the the Bowagan for that. <laughs>